Hey guys, it's me, I'm Andrea. I am doing this from my computer today. I'm testing out it's something that is going to go along with the podcast that I did, which is called Three Mind Shifts to a CEO Mindset. If you have not already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. It is AF Patrick. So uh, if you've not followed me on Instagram yet, go ahead and do that. Also, I post polls and things inside my face, inside my IG stories, and I would love for you to engage with me there, as well as inside the Facebook group because I want us to have conversations. This is about sharing what we know, helping each other out, growing with each other, sharing our experiences because we are small businesses. Some of us are smaller businesses and some of us are startups. Some of us might even be think-ups. I believe that I'm here with my talents and skills to serve. Yes, um, money is great and I do want to make some with what I'm doing, but I believe inside this group is our opportunity to really share with one another the things that we've learned. Just like I was saying before, I did, I've been doing a ton of webinars. When I've learned something, I'm trying to share it with you. That's what those three mind shifts to a CEO mindset were about. Because based on some of the things that I was looking at in those webinars and what I've read, and you know, as entrepreneurs, we should be reading and learning and growing. We never stop doing that. And so as I was doing that over the weekend and during the time that I wasn't feeling well, I, I wrapped my head around the fact that I had sort of lost sight of the, my own CEO mindset, not because I didn't want to accomplish those goals, but because I was sick and I was really just trying to make sure my clients were happy. And so after that, like I just kind of dove back in and figured some things out. It is time for those mind blocks that could be preventing you from achieving those mind shifts that are going to help you with your CEO mindset. So let's go, let's dive right in. I'm going to try to share my screen. Got some slides that I worked diligently on to share with you guys. All right, guys. Okay. This training is all about the mind blocks that could be preventing you from the mind shifts that, as I talked about in my podcast, the mind shifts that we really need to tap into to have a CEO mindset. And there were traditionally some that, you know, you read about, you hear about John Maxwell, all these different people that talk about leadership and CEO mindsets and things like that. And they talk about some pretty, you know, common things. I really thought that there were some things that people really don't talk about and from a personal branding perspective and really knowing your value and understanding yourself, I felt like there were some mind shifts that I had to make recently that were helping me get a little bit closer to my own CEO mindset, just really getting back to it. And I wanted to share those with you in the podcast. But then when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? There are some people who might be blocked and they're not even able to have those mind shifts because they have these certain tapes playing in their head that they need to get rid of. And so I wanted to walk through those with you today. Again, like I said, the podcast itself was was called the three mind shifts to a CEO mindset. I just wanted to really dive into the opposite side of that with this training. So in the first mindset, I said it was fear is normal. And I think we've all heard this. We know, you know, everybody's read the books, they've seen the videos, they've watched the, they've listened to the podcast, they've watched the YouTube channels. We've seen all of that, but I don't think it sinks in. I don't think we really, really get it. The fear is normal, okay? Even Henry Ford had fear. His quote said, One one of the greatest discoveries a man makes, one of his great surprises, is to find he can do what he was afraid he couldn't do. And I think that is part of, that is like a big statement because with the fear, we do feel like we can't do it. We might know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're intelligent and that we can put a sentence together. But even though we are being told by countless people that we're really good at what we do and they want us to help them do the same thing, even though that's the case, you still are afraid that you can't do it. Well, you can. And I want you to think about the fact that fear really does fuel us. So allow your fear to fuel you. Okay. But why do you have a mind block? Why are you afraid? What is the fear about? Even though it's normal, you really need to think about why the fear is there. And I believe that sometimes we're afraid because of a lack of confidence. We don't think that we can be as good as somebody else. We don't think what we have is as good as someone else's. And guys, that's not true because guess what? Someone needs what you have only the way you can give it, right? You're the only person that can tap into that particular group of people. The thing is, is you just got to find your tribe. You got to find the people who need what you have to offer the way you're giving it. So you don't have to have a lack of confidence here. So you need to get that mind block out of your way and be confident in you. That's why I talk so much about personal branding and really understanding yourself and your value. Because when you understand yourself and your value, the confidence comes from knowing how good you are, how, knowing about 
how knowing what you know is valuable, not what someone thinks of what you know, because they don't know your experience. They don't know your perspective on things. And so they can't say what you're doing is right or wrong. So the confidence factor really does come from you really tapping into who you are. Like I said, that lack of confidence is coming from someone who might be disparaging you or they might shun your ideas. Don't let that happen. You're going to have the naysayers. Get that mind block out of your way so that you can have this mind shift. Fear is normal and it's okay, but don't let other people cause you that fear. Don't let the fear come from outside of you. And if the fear comes from inside of you, that's when you can push past it because you know your value, you know your worth. Also, fear comes like the low self-esteem issue. Get past that. That's a good reason for you to do continuing educations, to be inside the groups that are providing good training that helps you along the way, the books, podcasts, the YouTube channels. That's why it's important for you to absorb all of that information so that it's within yourself. You can decipher it and determine what is going to be valuable to your tribe or to help you grow your tribe. So that fear is normal. Allow yourself that mindset, but overcome that mind block of, you know, the lack of confidence and letting other people say that you're not good enough or it's not going to work or not having faith in yourself. Get to know yourself well enough so that you can tackle that overwhelm and that fear and anxiety when it happens. The other thing that I think is a mind block when it comes to fear being normal is you have a rejection phobia. You're afraid of the people who are going to tell you that someone's going to tell you no. Don't let that bother you. I remember back when I was doing Premier Designs Jewelry, I talk about this a lot. And if you if you are in a network marketing group, you may have heard this before, but it takes a hundred no's to get to a yes. So there were people inside Premier who were excited every time they got a no and they would check it off because that means they were that much closer to a yes. So don't allow the fear of rejection to stifle you. Don't allow that mind block to happen. Have the mind shift and say, it's normal. People saying no is normal. It's okay. It's fantastic fantastic actually because the, I'm that much closer to my yes and then also they have this mind block of self-doubt okay you feel like you're an imposter that happens so much it still happens to me I know people who are way up in their business and doing a lot better than I am and they're saying the exact same thing they're saying man you know I don't even believe I'm able to do this I can't even believe that I get the opportunity to be in front of you today and talk about this because I mean I feel like I'm just like you it's imposter syndrome you don't feel like you're the real expert well you are the expert if you've taken the time you've done the work you've put in your effort you're the expert you know what you're talking about and you can walk in that again it goes back to being confident and having a certainty that you know what you know and that what you know is enough to share with people who don't know if that makes any sense. So don't allow the mind block of self-doubt to prevent you from having your mind shift and knowing that fear is normal. All right, the other thing that happens is you have this overwhelm looking at the big picture. So you doubt that you can really achieve the goal that you set for yourself because it seems like such a big thing. Well, on one of the webinars that I was watching this weekend, she had a very good point and she talked about breaking up your big project into 12 week periods. Like you have a project, give yourself 12 weeks to achieve that project. And then in that 12 weeks, you break down into six two week action plans. And as long as you stay within those two weeks, let's say you set a goal for that two weeks, your big goal for that two week period is to get your email list set up. I mean, that's simple enough. But work really hard at that particular action plan for two weeks to make sure that you've achieved that, achieved that goal. And then the next two week period is a goal that's gonna help you get closer to achieving the overall project that you wanted to achieve. So it allows you to break up this big elephant into small bites. And I think that's a really good idea. If you're that type of person who gets really overwhelmed at the big picture of something and you're afraid, like you just, you just are paralyzed because you don't know what to do next, give yourself the opportunity to break your elephant down into smaller bites so that you can only focus on the bite, okay? I think that's going to be fantastic for you, for those of you who are struggling with that particular mindset of overwhelm. The next mind shift that I talked about in the podcast was thinking, thinking really does slow you down. And I know that we've been taught, you know, to measure twice, cut once, you know, to think about things before you say them, all of that. And all of that is true. You should definitely do those things. But when it comes to a CEO mindset, if you put too much thought into it, it's going to prevent you from getting the job done. And when you spend too much time on it, you are losing time on 
you actually determining whether or not what you're doing is going to work. If you're thinking in terms of, okay, so I need to do, I want to get this done. I want to create a course and I want this course, you know, I need it to launch and you're wanting this to happen. Well, it's not going to happen if you got to go through all these different steps to get it there. And you're going to think about it, think about it, think about it. You're never going to get to the point where you actually do it to see if it works. And here, when I was on the podcast, I talked about done is better than perfect. The perfect example of that was this training. Yesterday, I was so excited that I had set everything in motion. I knew like the podcast went out, my email went out to my email list to tell everybody about the training that was going to happen. I had shared it all on social media. So I felt like all my ducks were in a row. Guys, I forgot to schedule the Zoom inside my Zoom. And then I forgot, I got hammered with um, customer stuff and forgot to get on the live at three o'clock. Forgot I even told everybody that I was doing the live at three o'clock. And I was like, oh my gosh, but you know what? That's okay because now I know I tried it I tried to do it on Wednesday I thought it was feasible it's not feasible because if I'm worried about making sure that all the ducks in a row to get the podcast out to get it distributed to the people so that they know it's there and they can listen to it then I can't do the training on the same day number one because it was too much for me it's completely slipped my mind but number two because I had to give you guys time to listen to the podcast and if I'm posting it at nine o'clock in the morning I'm sharing it and I'm telling you that the podcast that the training is at three people People might be working. They might have their own client stuff to do, but they don't have time. And so I learned the lesson. I learned that the podcast needs to come out on Wednesday and the training needs to happen on Thursday. But you know what? I owned it. And now I know. I didn't wait, you know, forever to try to do the training and not get to it and not know if that was going to be the case. I went ahead. I tested it, threw it out there as an idea boom, figured out that the way I thought it was going to work wasn't the best way for it to work. So done is better than perfect. The other thing I talked about here and um, the fact that thinking slows you down is that we procrastinate and that costs us money. I'm going to go back to the tr the idea of the, the course and I have not necessarily procrastinated. I won't say procrastinate, but what I will say is being a one woman show, I have allowed other things to take precedent over my own big ticket items. I've let client stuff, you know, get in my path, family stuff. Of course, I wasn't healthy for a while there. So that kind of got in the way. But when I really sat down and thought about it and I was doing these trainings this past weekend, what dawned on me was you are missing out on your own big picture. And so you got to get up and get it done. And guys, I did. I got up Sunday. I was on trying to find a contractor to do to edit my videos. I hadn't even done the videos yet. I got up and I found someone that was going to do them for me. And so then I knew this week all that had to get done because I am on target to get my goal accomplished, my big ticket item accomplished. So I couldn't procrastinate because that big big, big ticket item is a course that's going to pay me money. And so that procrastination was costing me money. That putting everything before my own personal goal, my own big ticket item was costing me money, regardless of what that procrastination looks like for you. You might have a ton of clients and you're working on your client stuff, but if your overall goal is not to have clients, but your overall goal is to have a revenue generating evergreen course, then you can't allow the customer work to get in the way. You've got to find time. Calendar block, we talk about that a lot. Routines, we talk about those a lot. You've got to find the time to put yourself first and put everything else after. The next thing I talked about in the podcast was experiment, don't commit. Okay, that goes back to what happened. I experimented with the podcast, having it launched on Wednesday and then trying to do the course on Wednesday. Also, that didn't work for me. I experimented with it. It didn't work. I owned it inside the group. Boom. I didn't commit to it. I didn't commit to always having it on Wednesday. I, com I experimented with it being on Wednesday. I wasn't married to the idea. So when I had to shift it, it was fine. I just shifted. I, I put a note in. Hey guys, I'm doing the live on Thursday. So the other thing that this mind shift happens, thinking slows you down. The mind shift is the thinking slows you down. And because done is better than perfect, procrastination costs you money and experimenting. You want to experiment, not commit. But why do things have to be perfect for you, right? So then let's talk about the mind block. Why is that an issue? And one of the things is because maybe you see what other people are doing and you see their course and you take it and you're like, wow, it is so nice. You know, she did such a really good job. You know, she's much better at that than me. She's got a larger following than I do. She's got a team that can help her, this, that, or the other. Guys, that may not be the case. One of the things that I have learned lately is that with this whole idea of experimenting and not committing, you don't have to have it all done. It doesn't have to be perfect. You got to test it. 
you got to experiment. You got to get out there. I had my course. It was the bare bones and I had people beta test it. And I let them know, hey, 50 bucks. I appreciate you coming in. Just go through it. Tell me what you think about the material. Tell me what you would change. Tell me what you wish you had in there that wasn't. Tell me what you wish wasn't there that is. That type of stuff. And then you get people to give you feedback and you build it out as you go. And you're experimenting with it. If you do if you do that and they beta test it and they come back and say, you know what, this really, I don't think is a viable option for you. I really didn't learn anything. I didn't get anything from it. Scratch it. Now you know, you tested the idea. People didn't like it. You can scratch that idea and move on to the next thing. Instead of, like I used to do, I've got seven, probably seven courses under my belt. And before I realized this, before I had my actual CEO mindset, before I was an entrepreneur and I was like, okay, I'm a small business. I'm going to have a business. That was my attitude. But I've shifted since then into a CEO mindset. But prior to that, what I would do is I would create a whole course based on what I thought someone needed to know. And then I, I mean, I mean the whole thing, the whole thing, guys. I would do the slides, well, I would do the outline, I would do the script, I would create the slides, I would record the slides, I would put it up in some sort of a website that would house the course, go through all that. And then I would try to sell it because I saw other people selling these courses. I didn't know the behind the scenes of experimenting and not committing. But what I had done with like five of these courses is I committed before I knew if it was going to work. So of course, when it didn't work, I was crushed. I was like, ah, oh, I did all that work. As a matter of fact, even to this day, creating the course that I just created and I'm about to launch, I was like, if I'm tired of creating courses. I'm so sick of creating courses, but I did it differently. I did it differently. I, I'm experimenting. I tested it first. I got people to look at it first and give me their feedback. And I'm making the adjustment to what they said and boom, I know that it works because they were giving me all kinds of praises on the back end. So that's how you do it. You experiment in order to overcome this mind block of feeling like everybody else has it right. Everybody else's stuff is better than yours. It looks better than yours. Don't have that mind block. Like stop thinking so much. That's what I want to say. Have the mind shift that thinking slows you down. Come up with the idea, test the idea as quickly as you can get it tested. And then you can determine whether or not it's going to work or it's not faster. And when you do that, you make money faster. You make, you achieve your goal faster instead of going through the motions like I did for the first five courses. And I didn't do, I, I committed to everything and I spent so much time. So don't allow that to happen. The next thing that could be a mind block for you is you suffer from paralysis by analysis. We all know what that is, right? So we have this great idea. We've tested the great idea or we, we have a great idea and we're like, oh man, that's a great idea. And you start researching it and then you think, wow, this is going to be a huge undertaking or you start like thinking about all of the tasks, which goes back to like having that big picture and, and, and taking bites, smaller bites of your elephant. But if you sit there and you think, wow, this is going to be a little bit more than I thought, you know, or you get overwhelmed and that's what paralyzes you. That's what keeps you from doing the work. Stop thinking about it. Don't think about the big picture. Think about that two week chunk that you need to get done. Boom, get that done. Move on to the next two week chunk. I use Asana as my project management tool. And if you, by the way, this is just a little aside, but if you'd like to see an Asana training, let me know. I will put that inside the group. I actually have another, um, well, I got a surprise and I'll tell you about that in a little bit, but just know that I've got two of these surprises that I wasn't planning on talking about the second one. But anyway, the point is we should not be paralyzed because we are spending too much time thinking about something. Let's stop that that mind block, guys. Let's stop being paralyzed and let's start making things happen. Let's start experimenting instead of committing. And then that way, that mind shift of thinking slows you down. That mind shift will work for you in your CEO efforts. The other thing is that you're afraid to actually succeed, okay? That's a surprise, right? Like. Some people think about things too much and they won't allow themselves to just get out there and do it, just jump in there and do it because they're afraid they might be successful. Think about that one for a minute, right? Don't let that be the case. It's great if you're successful. What's the worst that could happen, right? Like you're successful, you got money coming in hand over fist or whatever that is, it doesn't even have to be about money. But maybe for like, I'll give you an example. Like I wanted to have this business and before I had this business, what I would do, like I was, I'm, I was a stay at home mom because I had these girls that were born really early. So I couldn't go out and work in the corporate field like I had prior to having kids because I have a daughter who has special needs. And I just remember thinking, I just did not go to college 
to stay at home, I had these goals and these dreams. And so I started these businesses. And at first, you know, there was little things that were easy to do. But then when I really like got down into it, it was like, okay, this is a lot of work. Like I wasn't thinking it was going to be this much work. And sometimes I'm sure some of you watching might agree with me, but sometimes you have those days where it's been such a day and you think, what was I thinking when I decided to do this? How much easier would my day have been if all I had to do today was clean my house? <laughs> I mean, honestly. So sometimes the the, the mind block is the fear of succeeding and you can't overcome that. So don't think about it. Don't think about whether or not you succeed. It slows you down. You need to have the mind shift. So the next mind shift that I talked about was transparency is a must. And the reason I say that, it really goes into the whole idea of personal branding and what I'm talking about because people really don't, your clients and your collaborators, they need to know that you care about their issue before they care about what you know. And that's why it's so important for you to understand your own epiphany moment and why you're doing what you're doing and then recognize your journey as you've gone along your success path because your client base is going to have similar challenges because obviously you're trying to fix that problem for them and you fix it for yourself or you fix it for someone else so you know the path. The thing is, you can't tell them the answer to the problem before you show them that you understand the problem in the first place. So your clients and your collaborators need to know that you care before they care about what you know. You've heard me say that a thousand, thousand times. So the mind shift I talked about was that transparency is a must. You have to talk about it. You have to be transparent. But why wouldn't you share yourself? That's the mind block. Why, why, why am I struggling to share myself? Why is that such an issue for me? One of the things is because you are casting such a wide net for your client base that you can't relate to them. So it's hard for you to be transparent because there's too many people coming from too many different angles with too many different issues. And because you're just trying to do one thing, you think that that one thing will solve the problem for everybody, but you can't, you can't give of yourself freely when the niche you've created for yourself is so broad. So you have to narrow your niche. I always talk about casting. You want to have be a big fish in a small pond, not a small fish in a big pond. Because when you're the big fish in a small pond, people are looking to you for answers. And now you can freely give those answers out of your own experiences. If your pool is too big and you're just a small fish, there's too many other people in that pond doing the same thing you're doing, sharing their stories, sharing their issues, sharing their answers. So there's no way really for you to tap into how you can relate to the right people. So the first mind block is thinking that you got to to give everybody your answer. And that's not true. You're not giving everybody your answer. You're not supposed to make everybody happy. Every dollar somebody puts down is not your dollar. So that is the first mind block that we have to get over. We need to have a smaller niche. And then also, you don't really know how to relate to your target audience once you've discovered them. Well, that's what we talk about, really understanding your value and understanding your own epiphany moment. Because when you do, what happens is you know your journey. Your journey is very specific to you you know yourself inside and out. So when it comes to your customer base and the problem you're solving for them, it's easy for you to tap into some of those same challenges you see in your client base. You can tap into that inside yourself. And when you do, that's when you're meeting people where they are. And now you're not skipping ahead to the finish line and making them feel like you're trying to sell them. You're helping to them to see that you really do care about them because you, you can relate to where they are right now. So that's what we have to do is we have to really be transparent. That's the mind shift. We have to be transparent so that our audience that we're trying to attract can see themselves in us and see how we've succeeded in solving the problem that they have. And then they're going to flock to you because now they're like, oh, wow, she, she understands me. She gets me. And that means everybody's not going to feel that way. Everybody's not going to like the way you're giving your answers. And that's okay. That's why it's important for you to be the big fish in the small pond. And I don't know how many webinars you've watched or people you've heard say, but it, it's not about quantity. It's about quality. We talk about vanity metrics on social media. Tons of people have tens of thousands of followers, but you can make just as much money or do just as well with hundreds of followers if those followers are really dedicated to you and they really are into what you have to say because they're going to engage with you. They're going to tell you what they need, which allows you to give them what they need, which in turn has they 
will pay because they told you they needed it and you gave it to them. They're going to buy it. So it's like, it's like you have a little family of people who really want to A, see you succeed because when you succeed, they succeed. Does that make sense? The other thing that happens is you haven't really tapped into your own value. And that was what I was alluding to earlier. Transparency is really hard when you have a lot of baggage because you don't want people to see your baggage. You don't want people to see your pain. And if you've not dealt with that, if you've not you've not really tapped into the things in your, I call it your brand heritage bag. You'll hear about that in my course if you were to take it. But your brand heritage bag, if you don't figure out how to unpack it for clarity, there's no way you can have consistency and authenticity in your business because you have to be clear on who you are and what you're bringing to the table to even recognize a match in your customer base and to know if they're the right target audience for you. It's just important. So you have to tap into your own value, understand what part of you is going to help the people that you're trying to serve and then allow that part of you to shine through. All right, so I want to ask you something. If you shifted your mindset just with one of these areas, how much of a difference do you think it would make in your business? So let me know. If you shifted your mindset, if you got rid of these mind blocks in just one area that I talked about today, how much of a difference would it make in your business? And just know, I'm not trying to sell you something on the back end. I know that this is what this sounds like, but I'm not trying to sell you anything on the back end. I do have a surprise for you though. If only one of these elements gave you the edge you needed to make a broader step in being intentional with your business, wouldn't it be worth it? Don't you think? Give me a yes. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me. So who is ready to go from mind blocks to the mind shifts that we've been talking about to the CEO mindset? And if you are, I want you to type ready. I want to know if you are ready to have and adopt a CEO mindset. If you haven't already, Follow me on Instagram, AF Patrick. Um, I do those polls also over inside my stories. And yeah, I think that's I think that's it, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.